Hey gang, it is Thursday, March 29th, 2018, and this is Brooklyn Pony Part 25. That means there's 24 other videos in this series. So for those of you that have just started watching these videos, or those of you who have not seen any of the others, I encourage you to go back and look them over. This is a 68 um, Coupe V8 automatic car with factory AC. It had drum brakes and I did a bunch of work on the front. I put in, uh, well, to start with, I put in new floor pans, torque boxes. I replaced all the front sheet metal, put in a rebuilt 302, started converting it to vintage air, and I've converted it to power disc brakes and power steering using a Borgeson power steering kit. The brake kit is CSRP. You can look them up. Um, I also replaced all the front suspension and in the rear I rebuilt or took out a mini spool that was in this Ford 9 inch. This rear end is out of a like a 58 or 59 Mercury so it's narrower. That's why it has the spacers on it. Came with the car so that's what I'm using. And in this video I'm going to continue on with replacing the rear sheet metal. Now obviously the previous video was removing or replacing the outer wheelhouse and also that extension down there on the trunk. So everything's in place now. Uh, everything's welded in and I did put paint on it. Um, doesn't really need it, but it doesn't hurt it. So I've had some viewers ask about that. So I did cover everything up and later on there will be seam sealer added down here in this gap and also in the internal gap there will be seam sealer added. So that's not what this video is about though. This video is about installing the tail panel and this is the part number for the tail panel right there from Mustangs Unlimited and this quarter panel. Now in the previous video I showed problems I had with this quarter panel and this is the part number if you are at all interested. I think you can read that. Maybe not. Yeah, it's there. Okay, so basically I did a fitment test, uh, mocked everything in place when I put the wheelhouse in, and that all went pretty smooth. I did have fitment issues with the quarter to the door, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but this, this video is going to cover how I, how I am installing this quarter panel. If you'll notice, I did cut, I left the, the gutter for the original quarter, even though this had Somebody else put aftermarket quarters on it a long time ago and they just overlapped the uh, original piece that was left. And these quarters, I don't know what they were on or designed for, but they had these recess areas here, similar to a 67, but definitely not. You can see the panel was rounded off quite a bit and all the forming and shaping was done with filler. That's what all this is right here. So I'm, that's the main reason I'm replacing these. The other thing is, in the back, when I took this uh, and started stripping the metal off, or putty off, I found a half inch of Bondo right here, and that was to compensate for the valance panel to fit. The bottom of this quarter is round, doesn't have any transitions. Whoops, sorry. There's no good transitions in this quarter, and nothing like the uh, factory one. And so, comparing that to a, this one, which appears to have a pretty decent stamping up front here. I'll get into that more later. Um, the bottom has this recess area, which it's supposed to have. Hope you can see that okay. It's kind of hard to get my hand down there. And then this back section also has this recessed area. And this is where the valance would meet. So, that compensates for the problems with the uh, panels that were on the car. Um, I'll get into fitment as I go along and I'll show you more details. As you can see I have the tail panel mocked in place. I did use some self-tapping screws up here to hold it in. Um, I also, if you'll see, there's some silver marker in these holes. That's where the original spot welds were that I drilled through to remove this. And these well, were drawn with a silver sharpie. That's where I will bear the metal later 
to uh, prep it for welding. So the tail panel, it fits really nice. It's, it's a really good uh, fit to this car. As you can see, I've got it set up against the bottom edge of this original panel, the original drop that would be here. It doesn't quite line up with the holes, but it's close enough. And those holes are for the valance panel. And again, that's, they're fine. Um, I'm more worried about the up and down fitment than having a little bit of an issue with these holes. And I can compensate for that. Same way with the mount holes for the bumper. Again, I'm more concerned with how it fits up and down as opposed to it matching these holes exactly. These I can open up. Uh, it's much easier to deal with. Um, other than that, it lines up pretty nice. Uh, same thing over here. I did the pre or marked all these holes again with Sharpie so that I can prep the metal for weld. I'm not too worried about this side because I'm not working on this quarter right now. Um, I'm really focusing on getting the tail panel in place along with the quarter pretty much at the same time. Uh, let's see what else was there. In the front here, when I removed the old quarter, you can reference the old video, there was, you can see these, they use a uh, spot drill to remove the previous welds, and then I had to grind through the welds from that replacement panel. So that took a little bit of effort. Um, there are welds down here where the top of the quarter overlaps and rolls down into that section. So just know that. Typically I put the window down and I uh, have whatever I have left over from when I cut the quarter off originally, I mangle that up and grind out those welds. So that's all been removed. Up here, there's lead. The original seam is covered in lead and the original tail panel actually had a flange that went up behind here. Um, it's up quite a bit. In fact, if I put my hands up and I can touch the top of it, basically it's where the top of my fingers are. So what I'm getting at is it's near impossible to replace the full quarter um, without having to do something to that roof, the sail panel. And it's easier the way, in my opinion, the way I'm doing it is where I cut off this old quarter, uh, I can butt the, well, butt the new piece up to it. So I've trimmed that down already. And I wanted to point out this too. This little relief or whatever is going on right here. This was packed full of lead. And that was factory. Whatever was going, going on here, I don't know. But you can see a little bit of a line. Uh, I don't know if that's a flange or not. But from here up, this is lead. And this is steel. So anytime you're working with this stuff, you want to remove as much lead as you can. And being that I'm going to be doing spot welds, uh, I'm not going to remove all this lead. I'll just use slow welds and so I don't get the heat and melt and get the lead to melt. But at this point, this had a huge wad of lead in here that I'd already ground out. Um, what else was there? Again, as I talked about, I cut off the quarter and I left this little, I don't know, 3 16 of an inch of the flange hanging over. So that's where I'll also butt the quarter panel to it. And again, if you looked at the previous video, you already know that I've I've already cut this quarter to, to match mostly to this car. And so now I'll just go through some other details that I'm working on. Now some of the things I've talked about in previous videos are this lower flange. You can see this right here. This makes the rocker panel. Normally I've had to cut, put a relief cut here, but this one seems to fit fine. Looks like I've already kind of addressed that in some way. And to put this on, I have to slip it on at a bit of an angle. So I drop it back down a little bit, slide it around that uh, where the quarter glass is. Since I've already had the tail panel in place, I'm just going to set it on top of it. Now, for the most part, it fits fine. For the most part. 
I'm going to clamp it in place. I've already got it to where it fits the wheelhouse. Now in the previous video where I showed the wheelhouse uh, process, I pointed out that this top corner here of this replacement uh, quarter panel, this is where it fit and it, it had an odd, it sat too high where it met this face here. Especially since this is already making contact with this corner brace which is firmly attached to the tail panel. Now what I had to do was I drilled out these little spot welds and that allowed this to come down and I could push it in and that's going to be a lot closer when I get to the uh, final stage of welding but just something to note also down here where this uh, spot weld was I drilled it out because as you can see this is at a, a quite a bit of an angle and that's where it sat whenever I found whenever I got it so I cut a relief there and now I can rotate this up and clamp it in place and re-weld that. So quite a bit of difference. And you can see it's going to affect a little bit up here when I push it up, but that'll all compensate whenever I have this in place. It's just moving because it can right now. So I'll take care of this top section, get it clamped in, and then also clamp this in later. Um, the other thing I wanted to show, well here up on top, and this is just a matter of trimming. You got to get these pieces as close as you can. So in this case I do, I have a pretty tight gap. And you can probably see now, this quarter sits up quite a bit. Well, when I push it down, I can, and it's hard to do with one hand, but I push it down and rotate it in, and that gap gets a lot smaller and almost goes away as I go further back. So that's a good thing. Here, this is where I've trimmed it uh, a little bit so that it would go in line with this original piece. And again, there's some minor adjustments that can be made there. You can see that's how tight I have that gap. Here at the front, you'll see that the quarter is actually a little bit long. You can see that gap. And that's not a good thing. Um, what happens is when you shut the door, and I should note that the door is on the original location. Um, I did have the door off, but I never took off the hinges, and so I put everything back on the original witness marks. I had never moved the striker, so the striker is in the right place. And now this is much, obviously much too tight. So my fix, and I mentioned this in a previous video, is I'm actually going to cut this somewhere along here and bring it back. I'll section out an eighth, maybe a little over an eighth of an inch to compensate for this butting against here. There's really no other way to fix that. So I'll move that back. And then the other thing, which is kind of hard to show you right now with the because the door's catching. Or hitting the rocker is I want to show this as well this I made a cardboard template of the door and I've shown this in a previous video I'm sorry if I'm showing it again but some people may not have seen it I made a cardboard template of the door to show and this is an original door it hasn't been messed with and the quarter panel doesn't have that same profile come down here you can see it's off Come up here and you can see it's off which means that the center section is well basically too shallow and so to remedy that what i did i put a relief cut there a relief cut here which is basically in line with this transition same way here and then i put another little one right there and what happens is when i push in on that let's see if i can see this okay when i push in on that You can see how much that changes. And that's going to allow the quarter, that's going to allow the quarter to line up with the door. I know it's kind of hard to show you this with 
one hand, but I think you get the idea. So I'm going to move along and start prepping for all this to take place. So here I have the tail panel and you can see I picked up a, just a, a pattern of holes here that I drilled um, that'll mate with this flange as I talked about earlier. I've also sprayed this with weld through primer and my primer of choice is 3M part number 05917. So I've done that. I've also sprayed primer on the back side of these flanges here and here. Um, and I've drilled a hole beside the bolt holes for the bumper and also weld it to those. I need to spray some primer on there now that I see that. And uh, also up here at the top, I drilled two holes and those will coincide with this area and then I drilled through these and I will weld those from the inside and that will mate with the inside of the panel there. Other than that, uh, I did put some bare the metal where the uh, holes that I drilled up here will mate and also back on this surface here, this is where the quarter panel will overlap as you can see there and what else was there I see I missed a spot I gotta put a little primer there too I've also prepped the quarter panel and I'll show more of that later on now again the plan is to get the tail panel in place and then put the quarter on after so now that everything's prepped Once again, I'm, I'm happy with the fit. Things line right back up where they were supposed to be. And so I'm going to weld this tail panel in place. tail panel is fully welded in and of course I'll grind down those welds and retouch them as necessary to make sure they're nice and smooth and as you can see I've set the quarter panel on the car and what I wanted to show you one of the things I always try to show is I took a sharpie and went through all the holes that I had uh, 
prepared in the quarter and I'll bear the metal on the wheelhouse and then I'll put a little bit of um, weld through primer on that as well. Same way down here I marked the contact points here and I'll do the same thing. So that's working out. Um, already I'm not going to add any weld through primer on this surface it's a butt weld. And of course I'll have to kind of hard to show you. I don't have see if I have a light. You can see the maybe see where those holes are now. There it is. And what I'll probably end up doing is using a piece of wood and wedging it in here to push this back so it's nice and tight against that inner structure. As you can see I drew a rough line where I'm going to cut off the front edge of the quarter panel and I want to make sure I get enough material removed that I can slide this back and it'll butt against the uh, face of the B pillar. So that'll be, that'll be the next step that I do. I wanted to show you this before I finished but that's what I cut off of the front face of the quarter and now I've started a second cut and there you can see how much I'm removing. Not even the width of the cutting blade. So that's that's going to take up or hopefully take care of that gap. So if you need a profile, <laughs> I have one. But I'm going to shorten the cut up here a little bit because I think it's going to fit better when I get to the top so I don't need to cut it all the way off like I'm doing right now. Okay so as you can see I've remounted the quarter panel um, and here's the edge that I had cut off and really you know I left a little bit of that on that flange like I was showing earlier. So now what I plan to do is test fit this and see how much material I need to remove if any more or see if it's close enough. And uh, I believe I'm going to have to take off some more material because if I just butt that against, it's too tight down here at the bottom. And I really need to move, remove probably just another maybe 16th to an eighth of an inch. So it kind of gives you an idea what I'm going for. And uh, I'll do that. I'll take it back off and trim this just a little bit more and refit this. And when I'm happy with it, I'll come back and start tacking this back together. Again, I remounted the quarter panel, and I think that was the amount of material I needed to remove right there because that makes for a nice gap. It may look a little big right there, but that's because it's so dark, you can't see the actual edge. But, uh, yep, that's where it's going to go, and I'm going to get set up and tack weld this back together.
Okay, so I'm done shortening this and, and blending most of this. There's still a little bit to do, but I think you get the idea here. Um, and I wanted to show something else. You know, you can see, again, the door is lined up on the hinges where it was before. So nothing's changed with the door. And we already, I've already shown how this corner panel doesn't want to line up. Now, I was referencing uh, some, some uh, conversation I had with uh, a follower on the channel, uh, James. And he had asked me problems with, uh, about problems he had with his 67. Similar situation where these wouldn't line up. And I said, hey, you know, sometimes it might help to just cut off that lower flange. So I want to share that with you because I had, sometimes I have to take my own advice. Being that this is sitting where it is and you can hopefully see these lines are off just slightly. Um, it's kind of hard to... Yeah. But anyway, these lines are off. So if I let the lower section um, slide out, this whole quarter drops down and that line gets right on the money. Now, granted, I still have to you know, deal with this shape, but I can press that in easier uh, since I've you know, done, made those relief cuts that I talked about. But to get this line better, it's easier to bring this out. So what I'll end up doing is I'll cut, cut off, and it's not much. It's just a little tiny bit um, that needs to be adjusted off this bottom. And it takes care of both of these lines. So that would be my, my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off that bottom section and then fit this the way it should be and work that back in and uh, show you how that looks. Okay, so like I said, I cut off the bottom and I didn't remove, I mean, I, I cut two, well, I cut my line with that cutoff wheel that I have from Harbor Freight and then I probably did one more width. Now, your results may vary. We don't know exactly what's going to fit your car in this situation. But now I'll be able to take that piece and just with a little manipulation, you can see it popped in there, but um, get that lined up and tack weld that in. And that's going to take care of the bottom of this and also address, you know, these other little fitment issues that I had. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, other than I shouldn't have to do this, honestly. Um, as I've discussed before, these panels are, they're okay. They're not the greatest. And, uh, you know, like I, I, from what I, the conversations I've had with other people, they've had similar problems and had to address them in a similar way. But uh, this is just how I'm doing it. And let me get that tacked in and we'll go on from there. Everything is welded and blended and I like the line now as well as how it fits and uh, I'm gonna pull this back off and go over a couple things and get ready to weld this together okay so I prepped the back side of the panel I did blend down these welds and put some paint on there and on the back side of the uh, contact surface to the B pillar I put some weld through primer. Same way with all the other areas where I'm going to be welding. That's all prepped. I'm not worried about the top seam where the quarter meets the sail panel. Prepped all back here. Same way down there. Uh, if I haven't mentioned before, I did paint all the welded areas inside on the wheelhouse. And there's more weld through there. And weld through on the B pillar. So. Um, the main thing I'm going to worry about once I start fitting this up is protecting this glass and I have some cardboard here that I will slip in whenever I'm doing my my welding and uh, of course I'll, I probably should lay that wire where I want it to go now so that I'm not fighting with it later 
just something to think about there. And that should be it. So I'm going to get this quarter mounted up for the final time and start welding it. Okay, so you can see all the welds around that perimeter. Now some of those I need to add more material to, but I just wanted to get everything in place. I still have a little bit of a gap up here, which it's not going to get any smaller, obviously. So I'll work that in with tack welds. It fits the roof line nicely. Happy with that. Same way up here. Um, you can probably see how I was pushing in and out until I got the shape that I wanted. And I'm happy with that. Internally, I did the same thing. I've got, you know, welds that they'll need more weld added to them. But for now, that's all I really wanted to do is get everything in place. And it looks like it's fitting pretty good. Um, if I shut the trunk, the reveal is good. And I know I'd mentioned before about this extension. And if you look, you'll see it ended up a little bit off on that corner. And if I put the extension in place, um, you can see where it's going to need some help there. And what I'll end up doing is likely I will straighten out this flange since it's, it's only it's, all the spot welds are broke loose. I will straighten that out and rebend it to where it matches this corner. And that'll change this angle overall. Because I want to keep this corner, but I'll have to manipulate it and get it as close as I can to that corner. So that'll be a little bit of a little bit of a thing to work on, but shouldn't be too bad. So, like I said, I'm gonna keep on, you know, tacking all this in and I'll work on this try to get that taken care of and uh, show you how that turns out. Um, pretty happy with it. I think it's going to be fine and I'll have to obviously move on and get the other side done as well. So what I ended up doing here was I straightened this flange out with a pair of ductile pliers. These are used a lot in the aircraft industry. Um, and then I tack welded this down. Once, once I had that straightened out, I tacked this down and went to the original corner. And then I was able to roll that back carefully. I put um, this it's kind of a uh, slap bar, I think they call them, but I put it up behind and got it in this corner. 
and acted as a reinforcement. Now, even though that's uh, roughly taken care of, the extension, if you put it on, it lines up uh, pretty close. I mean, there's still, still some stuff that will have to be addressed with some filler, but that center section, if you look at the extension, it dips down. And so I put a little relief cut, and I probably could have come over a little further this way uh, with that relief cut. But by doing that, you can see that it'll, it'll curve. Hopefully you can see. It'll curve that little bit that I need to follow the shape of the um, extension a lot better. So let me get this welded in place, and I'll go on from there. All right, I think this is as far as I'm going to go on this video. Uh, I think I covered a lot of details. Um, you can see I've welded this and blended it. And there's still a little, couple little pinholes I'll have to address. But I think it's good. A couple little, little spots i got to weld in. I also welded in the holes where the vinyl top uh, trim was before. And then this area here, um, I think that's going to be addressed with a little bit of filler because that there was lead there before like I said but that's I'm not going to weld all that in um, the edge here I'm happy with and like I said I've still got a few little welds to fill in I haven't welded these uh, uh, yet to the inner brace but I wouldn't be able to really show you much of that anyway because the camera won't fit in there but I will press that over, we'll probably, like I said before, with a, a piece of wood, press that over and weld those in. And the only other thing left to do is weld the inside flange down here. And I can access that from the inside, roll the glass up, and uh, take care of that. You can just see the, where the holes are down there. So, I think that's it. The uh, end result, I'm happy with the way the door lines up now, happy with the gap. Um, this rear section, it's still going to take some filler to fully dress this out, and that's not unexpected, but for the most part, that lines up pretty close to where it needs to be, and it will take a little bit you know, of effort to dress it all up. Um, and again, here's the, the bottom area where these, you know, I talked about before. I will blend this down to match, or cut that off to match. Same way here, this, ex this piece hanging down is from the internal panel, so I'll cut that off to match as well. Um, things are lined up pretty good on the wheelhouse. I don't know if my camera's showing it very well. But I still have to finish welding in all the little little welds, and uh, otherwise I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, the tail panel and all that's in place, and I think that's it. Um, there's more videos to come. I'm not going to mess with or make any video of the right side. It's the same process as the driver side, and it would be kind of pointless to cover all that. I guess I should also show you the trunk happy with that reveal as well well this quarter panel took a lot more work than I expected it to so I'm somewhat disappointed with that but as we all know these aftermarket panels none of them are, are dead on anyway uh, the only ones that I've really had good luck with is an original tooling tail panel particular to the 65 and 66 this, this tail panel fit very well, so I'm happy with that. Um, at least now you have an idea of what it took for me to install this quarter panel and give you some idea what you might look forward to if you wanted to try it. Um, I think that's uh, all I'm going to do on this car. I'm not going to do a uh, video on the right side because it's the same process and it's not really necessary. And uh, there will be more on this car later. Um, I need to get back on the Brooklyn Pony and get some stuff done on it and I'm looking forward to that now. Um, just sometimes I need to do different things and get my batteries going again. Um, as usual, I, I thank you for watching and if you are so kind, you know, give a thumbs up 
or a thumbs down, either way. If you don't like it, I understand. Um, share my video, and if you haven't already, uh, subscribe. Somewhere over here, there will be a subscribe uh, button. So, uh, and I'll link this to my other videos as well. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, and take care of yourself.